In this presentation, we are going to look at limits of trigonometric functions. So, to start off, what we're going to do is look at some important definitions. And the limit of theta, the limit as theta approaches zero, this is an important bit down here, just keep an eye out for this stuff, that it's the limit of theta approaching zero. Sorry, my pen has gone a bit funny. There we go, theta approaching zero. Uh, this is theta here, and just in case you're not familiar with it, T H E T A. Okay, so these are the two basic definitions. Um, theta over sine theta is one. The limit of uh, theta over sine theta, as uh, theta approaches zero, is one. The second one is the limit of theta. Uh, the limit of sine theta or theta is one as theta approaches zero. Just as a sort of quick remark, there are these are two of the fundamental ones, but there are, how should I put it, extensions of these. For example, we could have uh, theta squared over sine squared theta, or no, sorry, theta squared there. Sorry, let's just clear that up, the theta squared, okay. That's an that's a, an extension of that, and also we could have coefficients. For example, k sine of k theta over k theta, and by the way, vice versa, we could have k theta over sine k theta. That's also one. The limit of that is also one. So there's a couple of these extensions, but the basic two are the ones I had there previously, and we're going to sort of refer to them as much as possible. Um there's also the fact that you can use tan with a couple of these definitions. So I'm just going to scroll down here now. So also the limit of tan theta over theta is equal to 1 and vice versa theta over the limit of theta over tan theta as well. Equivalently the limit of that. Okay. Now, the, that, those are extensions of the two basic ones. So what we're going to do here, first off, is define the limit. So we're going to do a couple of exercises. Find the limit of sine theta, sine 5 theta over uh, theta as theta approaches 0. So what we're going to do is multiply above and below by 5. So extend that out, times 5 times 5. Okay. Uh, so we would have the limit as theta approaches zero of five times sine five theta over five theta, okay? And that is equal to five times the limit, we can take the five out essentially, as theta approaches zero of sine theta five theta over 5 theta. So that was one of our extensions. Earlier on I said sine k theta over k theta theta is uh, 1. The limit of that is 1. So we have that reduces to 1. So we have 5 times 1. The answer there is 5. So that's the answer to the first one. Next one. Find the limit of sine 2 theta plus sine 4 theta over theta as theta approaches zero. Okay, so what we're going to do is split this up into two parts. So we have the limit as theta approaches zero of sine two theta over theta uh, plus sine four theta over theta. We can actually split that up into two separate limits. Okay, so what I'm going to do is we can we we can sort of write the expression as follows. I'm actually after taking something out there. Wrong pen size. Okay. Anyway. So we can have this expression here, and we just re, re express it. But we can uh, break that up into two separate limits. So we could have the limit of theta. At the limit of sine 2 theta over theta as theta approaches 0 plus the limit 
as theta approaches zero of sine four theta over theta. And what we could do here again is multiply above and below. So this time I'm going to multiply this by two, uh, two theta, just like we just done in the last example. Uh, four theta, uh, I'll put the four over there this time, just to work for the sake of space. Uh, exact same tactic as we done in exercise one. This reduces to one, this part reduces to one. So we have two times one plus four times one, and that's equal to two plus four, that's equal to six. So the answer to that one there is six. That's just a spare page for the uh, exercise two. So next one, find the limit as x goes to zero. So we're going to use x rather than theta because uh, I'm starting to trip, my tongue is starting to trip on theta. Sine 4x squared over x sine x. Now just remark, this is one of our extensions here. Limit of theta as theta goes to zero of sine theta squared over theta squared is equal to one. So, um, limit of x as x goes to zero of sine 4x squared over x sine x. So what we could do is actually split that up into two parts. We have sine x squared there over x times one over x. Thinking that's not really that helpful there yet, is it? Those aren't obviously um, uh, familiar from, uh, easily matched up with any of the definitions we've used so far. What I'm going to do is multiply above and below by 4x. Okay, so what we have here, and also I'm going to separate it out into two components. So we have the limit of x goes to zero. So I have this part here, sine 4x squared over 4x times x. So I have sine 4x squared over 4x squared. Great, that's a nice easy one. Times the limit of uh, as x goes to zero of 4x over sine uh, x. Okay, what I could do here is actually just take out the uh, four and just have it as a separate term outside of the brackets. So times four. So this cancels to one, or reduces to one. This reduces to one and we have four there as well. So what we have is one times one times four. So the answer to that one is four. Last one. Now this one we're going to use tan as well. So uh, what we could do here is we have sine h squared over h. So we can rewrite this as follows. Limit uh, as h goes to zero. So we're not using theta, we're using h. Sine h squared and what I'm going to do is express this as h times h over tan h. Sorry, 1 over tan h. Okay. Again, what can we do here? What we could do here is multiply above and below by h. So add the h here and the h here. Okay, so what we have now is, let's just, let me, oops, let me, so we have h squared over h, okay, and so that is 1 times 1, the limit, you can treat the limit separately, of the two terms separately, so we have sine h squared over h, times h over tan h. Uh, oh, no, sorry, that's not what I meant to do. Essentially, it's one and one. So this is the limit of that part and the limit of the other part. So it's the limit of that times the limit of that. It is one times one. So the answer there is simply one, is one times one. So the answer there is one. All right, that's enough of that. And uh, we'll leave it there. How are we doing the time? 
10 minutes.